And we're going to start by looking at Zoom first because um, the the film with your phone element um, we will cover we'll cover it at the end. But I think more people might be interested in what we're doing with Zoom. So give me just a second, and I'm going to queue up the interface. And let's see here. Um, so one of the things that uh, I had talked about to people is you want to make sure that your uh, that your internet speed is fast enough to to actually be in be able to use Zoom for for recording and teleconferencing. So if you just type in Ookla, um, that is a place where you can get a sense of your internet speed, and um, you just pre press go here. You want a minimum of um, 1.5 megabytes per second. Um, what's that, Jalen? Was that you? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, it's okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay, so um, we're looking at um, at Ookla right now, and um, you want a minimum of um, 1.5 megabytes per second download and a minimum of 1.5 megabit bytes per second upload. The reason being, um, you you need to be able to um, download video because you're watching people and you're, um, and you're uploading video, which is like you, your video is going up. So it's gotta be able to go both ways. Um, and I think I, it might be megabits, which is different than a megabyte. It's not a big deal. You just need to know 1.5 is the minimum. And if you're having issues, if you're having um, if you're having issues, it might be because too many devices are connected to your internet. And if you really want your production quality or your your video quality to be boosted, you may have to connect some of those devices. Um, and it looks like Kyle just joined. Just making sure that you're okay being recorded, Kyle. Thanks, bra. Okay, thanks. Um, so we're gonna jump out of this Ookla and we're gonna go right into the Zoom interface. And I'm gonna go over it fairly quickly and then we're gonna talk about production possibilities. So give me a second here. Zoom, I'm going to, I have my own meeting set up and it's generally a good idea to um, have your meetings password protected um, because something called Zoom bombing, people can like phone in, they can just randomly get into your meeting and cause a ruckus. Um, so when we, when I give you guys the invite for this, it will have a password. It's going to prompt you to enter, enter that password when you get into zoom. Um, so just so you know that, so, um, I'm just going to go over the interface here, kind of starting at the left and going to the right. Um, we have our, our audio input is right here. You can see there's my microphone. Um, and then this is where I pick which microphone for my system I'm using. And this is where I'm gonna pick um, which audio like speakers or preferably headphones I have. And I would highly recommend that, you know, you have one of these Apple headphone type setups because it has the mic installed. So the sound is pretty good, it's less echoey. And then the other thing is when people talk, it's not echoing off of your speakers. And what that happens, it can happen is you get a feedback loop um, and that decreases the quality of what you're doing. Um, video, you want to have your camera, your on onboard camera, or you can actually purchase cameras. You can get like a, a web camera. Your the quality of your Zoom video will reflect the quality of your of your camera. So um, if you have a 1080p camera, it's better quality. This is a 70, 720p, which is the standard for MacBooks. Um, if I want to invite people to a meeting, I can do it directly here. I can also copy the URL if I want to um, invite people to a meeting and just send it to them as an email. But again, they're going to need that password. So if you send somebody a URL, they also need that, that password with it. I'm going to switch gears here just for a second while we're talking about inviting people. If you want to invite people, generally, I think a really good way to do it is from Google Calendar. So I'm gonna queue up Google Calendar. So right now I'm gonna click on this. This is actually a Zoom meeting that I have set up in Google Chrome and Google Calendar. So um, there is a plugin that you can get. There's an extension called Zoom. You go to the Chrome extension store and you can download that.
but um, it's set up so that if I create uh, an event, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to create an event here. I have this make it a zoom. It's sort of like what? Who is it that's like make it a tall or supersize it? Like this is how you zoom it, um, and that will just add all of the the information that you need, uh, including a link. And if you have it set correctly, it will also create a password um, link to. To get into the guts of that extension setting, I'm going to go here to Tools, Extensions. And I have the Zoom scheduler installed. And there's a bunch of all this, a bunch of options here, but the really important one that I see is the extension options. And you can actually, when you create that, I was having trouble with this. I was like, why won't it give me a password? Well, you have to click this on so it's required to make a meeting password. You can also make your own passwords. They don't have to be randomly generated. There's a bunch of other stuff that you can fill out here. Um, but if you are, if you, I, I recommend scheduling meetings through Google Calendar myself. You can also do it from the Zoom app. Okay, so getting back to Zoom. I'm going to close this. Um, when, when we're ready here, we have manage participants. So when a bunch of people jump in here, I can do all sorts of things. Um, I, can, um, I can't do much with me, but I can mute their microphone. I can mute their video. I can stop their screen share. And un under some circumstances, if you want to co-host a meeting, it's super helpful to be able to hand over the controls to somebody else. So um, managing participants is where I'm going to be able to mute people or um, add the, the, um, the ability to host as well. Um, share screen right here um, is pretty straightforward. Um, you just pick which desktop you want to share, which window. Um, there's an option here to share computer sound. If you're this, especially if you're doing a show, let's say you want to like have a clip that you show the audience or you want somebody else to share a clip, I would have it share computer sound. The reason why is because most it, it, if you if you run like a YouTube video or something like that, um, you won't hear the sound from that YouTube video unless you have this on. So um, the other thing is optimize screen share for video clip. What this does is it decreases the lag of the video clip, so um, it's it's less choppy. I assume it just dedicates more processor power to that, or makes it like a better quality um, codec. So I'm not going to share that right now. Chat is where we can chat with each other. Pretty straightforward. Um, and then this is pretty important: your record settings. So. There's two options. There's record to the cloud and record on this computer. I recommend record on this computer because it's higher quality. Um, record to the cloud is the quality is affected by your bandwidth. Um, and record on this computer is less compressed, just higher quality. For somebody like Ann who has Final Cut, you could just drop that into Final Cut Pro. I'm not going to do breakout rooms because if you're recording a show, um, the, this is really great for educational purposes, um, and they're pretty easy to set up. But if we're talking about doing shows, you're not really going to want to do a breakout room because you can't record each individual breakout room. And if people want, they can do reactions. But again, during a show, you're, you're less likely to do something like that if you're recording it. There's also options. We've set it up so you can go live on Facebook um, or YouTube. So Zoom allows you to that I think up to 100 or some crazy number, 100,000 viewers can watch your live stream. Um, and right now, we've had a little trouble getting it to stream properly on Facebook, but it's rock solid on YouTube. So I'm going to pause for a second because I just covered a lot of ground. Is that, yeah, I was going to ask, is that where is that where the TV shows are doing it? Like live to to YouTube or how are they? Um, so they're probably doing both. They're probably you're, they're giving a live option, um, but they're also they're also recording it so that it can be um, posted in other places. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So any questions? 
Any questions about the interface so far? Okay. So what I would say is what, you know, before we get into deeper into the guts of this, uh, into the Zoom, there's stuff on the internet that you can like set up the background settings. What I would say is, you know, this, you are trying to do a production, so you wanna focus on aesthetics. So I'm gonna stop presenting for a second and just present myself. Um, one of the things that you'll see in this room that I'm in right now is I have a light bulb right super close to my face um, so that it lights my face so I'm not in shadow. Um, and then I have this audio set up right here. And I think that's pretty important to, um, if you are trying to make this into a film program um, or into a talk show, is to pay some attention to aesthetics so that people will actually want to watch it. It's not too, um, like, especially the audio. If the audio is bad, people are less inclined to watch something. And then you want your, your video to look good too. Um, the other thing is, you want to be careful of headspace. So if I'm doing this, it's a little awkward and um, people want to see you not dead center, but they want to see more of you in the program. So um, try and get yourself into a position where you're basically um, it's sort of a medium close up uh, where you have your head is towards the top of the screen and then like maybe up to your chest. And by default, you're gonna be doing that anyway. But it's important to think about the aesthetics since we are trying to make this into something that people want to watch. Okay, uh, again, I'm gonna pause. Any, any questions? Okay. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to get into the back end of Zoom. I'm going to do screen share real quick here. So I'm going to press present now, your entire screen. Okay, so in Zoom um, online, there's just as much stuff that gets controlled online as there is, is that gets controlled within the app. So all of that's buried in here. I'm not gonna go too crazy in it, but it's where you set up whether or not people need a password to join a meeting. Um, there's, I'm trying to think of other important, yeah, there's things like mute participants upon entry, um, things that actually impact the quality of your meeting. You can also set up things called polls in here, um, whether or not you can offer up polls, which is kind of cool. Like you could stop during your Zoom meeting if you have a bunch of people in it and you can live poll people. So that could be like a fun part of your of your uh, program. Anne, did you have a question? Yeah, is that just in scrolling down? I didn't see that when I had gone through it originally. <laughs> yeah, so you have to go in, you have to go online and log into your Zoom account to do it and then you go under settings. Yeah, so there's like, there's settings that are in the Zoom interface, but then you have to go online to access even more settings. Yeah, okay, I thought I had, thank you. Um, there's also, let me see if I can find it. I'm gonna just, just see, do a quick search here. This is where you're gonna be able to turn on your live streaming. So give me a second here. Okay, allow live streaming meetings is right here. So that's where you're gonna click that on. So. It's sort of like most of the stuff you can access from the Zoom program and, and you want to have the Zoom program downloaded to your laptop or your handheld device. Um, but some of those settings you are gonna have to access um, in, in the, the web-based settings. Does that make sense to people? Yes. Okay. Then there's other stuff about, you know, when a cloud recording is available, have them send me an email kind of stuff. Um, you can set it up so that people can join the meeting before the host or if there's a waiting room. 
Um, so what I, I would just invite you to dig around in this and um, see see what things you need to click or unclick so that you can sort of streamline your presentation. Okay, um, let's see here. I'm gonna go back to the Zoom interface. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you just maybe a couple more things in the Zoom interface. Let me share one more time. The reason why, again, why we're doing this in Google Hangouts Meet is because I want you to see in the Zoom interface. So let me pull up my screen. Um, one of the things, I'm going to share my screen. Um, let's say forget to turn on share computer sound. So I'm going to put this, share that. Um, in the Zoom interface, I have to do the drop down, and there's still this option to share computer sound. Um, and and especially if you're doing a show, you can also set this so it goes live right here. Um, interesting. So, Jaylu, um, before I move forward, is there anything that you think I'm missing before we move into the Zoom meeting? No, I don't think so. Okay, so I did everything perfect is what I'm hearing. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I'm just joking. Um, so thank you guys. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna put the Zoom meeting information into the Google Hangouts meeting, and we're all gonna move collectively over to Zoom. It does require a password, so please pay attention to that. Um, I'm gonna do an invite. Hey, can you add? can you add an email? Because I... I'm on a different email on Zoom. OK. Um, what we need, all you need to do is click on, you just need to click on the invite. You don't need the email. I, I'm not going to, I'm just going to put it in. So I just put it in our messages. Do you guys see that on the right yep. there? Yes. So um, everybody, let's click on that and let's jump into the Zoom meeting. Um, recording actually. Uh... It toggled between me speaking full screen and then the person on the phone speaking, and it was in a, a vertical mode, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way you can actually just set like a picture in picture, like the side by side or something during the recording? Yeah, um, I, there is. And we, we did this, we have a show called Community Hotline where we're doing exactly that. Um, so what you would do is, I assume you're only having like one participant being interviewed. So I would go to the gallery view that's in the top right hand corner of the screen and that will show um, that will show the, the people being interviewed. And then let's say you have a third person that's your producer. So right now we have um, Emily Vidal as our producer and then Monica Weitzel is our host. Um, so Emily is sort of helping conduct the behind the scenes recording and then she mutes her she mutes her video. Um, and she disappears, um, and then um, and then Monica and whoever the person she's interviewing are the only two people that are on the screen. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. um, okay, so could you demo that right now? Yeah. So um, let's see here. Let me do. Let me see if I can do it by sharing screen. Of course, it won't show. So what, what you'll need to do is you need to set it up so that um, one person has to stop their video. And then in the, um, so wh what I would do is, let's say there's three people involved in the Zoom meeting. I'm sorry. One of them's the producer, one of them's the, the host, and one of them's the interviewee, right? So you tell the producer to stop their video. And then I can't show it in the interface here, but you go to the top right hand corner and there's an option for gallery view. And we have a chat in here. Okay, it looks like there's um, still people trying to connect. Um, now I'm gonna use the chat down here and make sure
Okay. Cat meow and moniker and now waiting for Anne. So we're still waiting for Anne. Um, so does that make sense? So basically you have one person stop their video and then, then you go to gallery view and it, you just go to the top right hand corners where gallery view lives. Was that for more than two people? Two people we use gallery view and, yep. it, and, and we'll be side by side then yep. during the recording. Okay, that, and then if we have more than two people, you can still use gallery view. You can. And, and you want someone to stop their video? Um, so if, if that person does not, is not in the conversation, I would call them a lurker. Like if there's somebody that is not actually involved in the interviewing, then I would have that person turn off their camera because then they won't show up. So I watched a NAB on the COVID thing, kind of a guideline by a National Association of Broadcasters yesterday. And they had this kind of view that I'm seeing currently, which is what uh, the main speaker was speaking and then everyone else was just off to the sidebar mm -hmm. hanging out. Is that, uh, what, what view is that? Um, so that's under, that would be, I think it's under speaker view. So um, under speaker so when, view, okay. if you do under speaker view, a little sidebar should pop up that's movable. And you can move that to the top of your screen or the right of your screen, but I can move it just about anywhere. And there's three options. There's um, hide thumbnail video, there's show active speaker video, and then there's that double rectangle that um, shows everybody, which is show thumbnail video. Seth? Yep. I think you have to be in full screen to be able to move your sidebar. That is correct. You can't be in gallery view because um, if you're in full screen, um, it's going to just, it's only going to, sorry, full, full screen is going to show you that sidebar. Gallery view is meant to show you everybody. So um, I, it, it just depends on what you want to do. I would say if you have two people talking, I would just, I would put it in gallery view and just have those two, two people talk on screen. If you're gonna have a multiple, if you're gonna have multiple people in your, in your show, then think about, I mean, you can have multiple screens running at once. You can click val gallery view, which is a fine thing, but just think about, can people process all, you know, people viewing this, are they gonna be able to process all of that? Um, it might make more sense to have speaker view on, which is basically, um, one, whoever, whoever talks, the microphone triggers the screen to switch to them. I guess I saw that kind of cool viral video of, uh, some good news SGN and they did the Hamilton and all the singers from Hamilton were awesome featured. And that was, I, I, I'm assuming because everyone was being shown, it was gallery view. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds right. Um, the other thing that I think is really important, and we've talked about it before, is mute people muting their microphones. So if they're if for some reason you do have multiple people and it's not important that they they jump around between them, you should consider putting on their microphone because then you won't I mean, make sure people have headphones um, and then you won't have as many feedback issues or echo issues. Right, sounds good. Okay. Um, J. Lou, was, were we able to get Ann in? Yes, I made it. Can you oh, hear me? Hooray, I should, I should know that. Um, if you look, I have a manage participants. I think you guys have a participants button at the bottom, but that shows everybody that's, in, that's participating in there. And as host, I'm actually able to hand over um, hosting to the people that are in there. Um, so another thing to think about is do you have a paid version of Zoom or do you have the basic version? If you have a paid version, your meetings are limited to uh, 40 minutes. So you can, still, you can still make a show, 
just make sure you only do it in 40 minute chunks. Um, something, to th something to think about. Any other questions or statements or ideas? Are there any other limitations to the, to the free app other than the paid app? Yes, and uh, to be honest, I don't have them memorized, but um, let's see here. If you go to Zoom cost, I mean, a big one for me is that time. There's also, um, I'm going to do a screen share here. Um, there's the time limit, and then there's also like uh, how many people can participate. Okay, so I'm, I'm sharing right here. Get some of this malarkey out of the way. So, um, there's no, it looks like less user management controls. But basically, um, I'll just plop this into the chat. It says that it's, I, I was kind of confused on that, but it says for the free app that it's only 40 minute limit on more than three speakers. So is there a limit on one-on-one? -on -one? Huh. I see 40 minutes limit on group meetings. I don't know about the one-on-one. -on -one. I do know that when I tried to set something up from my free account today, it, set, it didn't allow me to schedule for more than 40 minutes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I can see where it says unlimited one-to-one -one meetings. There you go. Okay. So I think that's probably, yeah, if you just have two people, which makes sense, especially like with the current environment, you know, that Zoom is actually trying to like make sure people can use their stuff for more fact, than just. When you, talk, when you toggled over the 40 minute limit, yeah, I think it says, if you could toggle over that one more time, it says. Uh, basic plan has a 40 minute limit on meetings with three or more total participants. Okay. So actually in that case, you could totally do a show and do it for as long as you want. If there's only three people <laughs> or two people. Yeah. Okay. Um, and for people that are used to producing from the studio, I think this isn't too much of like a stretch just because it's a multi-camera production essentially. Um, and a lot of people that do studio productions are already integrating this kind of stuff. We have a show called the Zada show where there's a woman who talks about issues in the Middle East. Um, and she, she interviews people from Iraq. So, um, and there's no, you know, that's how she's going to get her interview is over something like Zoom or I think we, she uses, I want to say Skype. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to stop that share. So any other kind of new meeting ideas that people want to share or, you know, that we've talked about this, gone over the interface? Rosa, go ahead and unmute. So I have a question. It's not uh, really related to why the reason that I'm in this meeting, but since you seem like a good resource, is there any, I haven't tried this over Zoom. I tried, I have a friend that I'm like in a band with, but we don't live together. Mm -hmm. And we've like tried on the phone. We tried WhatsApp. We tried all these things. We were like trying to rehearse singing, but everything. Yeah has a delay. Do you know of any software that like doesn't? Uh, just thought I'd ask. <laughs> I think that is um unfortunately that's the nature of physics. And if you have a faster <laughs> internet connection, it probably would help. Um but um even when we do a live broadcast from Zoom, there's probably like a five second delay. Okay. Um so um what I, what you could do, let's, I don't know. I mean, I've seen a few things where people like made a music video. What they probably did was just had a track that they played along with. So yeah. let's say you guys want to like make something. Well, you could like one person records one part and then the other person listens to that on headphones and plays it. But the right. live, live jamming is, is definitely inhibited. Yeah, that's what I figured. Just thought there might be some secret technology. Yeah. Anyway, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the question. They're, they're using TV magic. 
Yeah. They're, they have yeah. the recording behind them going on. Because yeah. yeah. you can That's, see, like, sometimes yeah. some, someone's playing a guitar and you can hear, you can hear drums behind them. So, you know, they're just yeah. adding that. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and it's like, ring, uh, one of them is like somebody did, like, The Weight um, by is it the band. So, like, Ringo Starr has his headphones on. And he's probably listening to the track and playing along. Um, and that's, you know, multiple people doing that, or they're just, they probably just hear it in the background, they're playing along with it. So, um, okay. I think, you know, for me personally, I think there's a lot of like, it's not as good of quality, but I think, people are less concerned about quality and, and there are some, you want to like do some things to increase your quality, but it's also about content. And um, since we're stuck at home and there's people that want to tell their stories, I think that Zoom is a really good way to, and the reason why we picked Zoom is because it's the most rock solid platform to be able to record these sort of video setups and um, share with people. So that's why we're, we're showing, showcasing this. And it's free. If you if you want to use it for two people, and they don't need to have Zoom, the person you're call uh, sending the link to, correct? They're going through the URL. Or? They can, but it's better to have the app. Um, they can go to the web browser and use it over the web browser, but it's much better to do it through the app. So, and and that is some a consideration. Everything might be rosy on your side. You might have really good like internet speeds and a fast computer blah 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 but you always have to think about the people on the other side like what's their setup and we've already bumped up against that with community hotline um so one of the things you can do is what we did is like test what they can test their internet speed and show it to you um the other thing is let's say that they oddly if they have a home wired connection let's say they have comcast or century link um or uh, Frontier as their internet service provider and their internet slow, they actually might have a faster internet connection through their cell phone, through cell phone towers. So it might make sense um, if you're interviewing someone, if they have some sort of limitation on their computer, it might actually make more sense to interview them on their phone. It actually might make for sort of more inspiring um, opportunities for interview settings. Like they could go to a park and set up their phone and do something like that. Okay, um, so if you guys don't mind, we're gonna kind of switch gears here and we're gonna talk about using your phone to film with. So give me a second here and I'm gonna share the screen. Um, some ideas, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump off here for just a second and I'm gonna unplug my headphones. Can you guys hear me okay? Good? It actually sounds better. I sound better? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Um, we're going to switch gears here and talk about using your phone. But before I do that, let's say you do interview somebody on, on their phone at a different location. What I would recommend is um, if they have some sort of tripod set up, there are adapters for phones so you can mount them on a tripod. They're super cheap. They're like eight bucks on Amazon. This one is. Um, they have a little tripod screw input right here. And then what you do is you just put the clamp on your phone, make sure to turn it sideways. Um, and then they, you can use that to, to set up an interview with a rock solid shot. There's also stuff for your tablet. So this holds an, an iPad or a, um, or a Android device. So here's, here's our iPad, you just insert it in here and then clamp it down. And that's a really good way to keep things solid with your setup. So, um, 
those those are both ways that if you're either just doing field production with your phone or you want to weave it into a zoom conference you can actually share um, you can share your screen from zoom so i'm actually going to show you right now in zoom i'm going to invite myself on my device And now I'm a new person in here. Can people see that screen? Yes. Okay. So that is, let's see here, sorry. Um, that's, the, that's our desktop. Sorry, I'm gonna pause for a second here. Can you guys hear me okay on the iPad? Yep, okay. Yes. So I'm gonna turn and do this. So you can actually, I'm gonna demo some of the software that we're using, but you can share a phone screen. Um, and this works both on the Android version of Zoom and the, the um, iDevice version of Zoom. So. Later, we're going to talk about what editing software to use. And you can demo how to edit something or share your screen from a handheld device. So how many people are interested in using are interested in using um, using a handheld like a, a phone as an addendum to their teleconferencing stuff? Um, I, oh, I am. I am. Yes, I am. Especially yeah. how you shared your 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 mobile screen. Okay. Cool yeah, beans. That's something that we could use as well over here. Okay. So, mm -hmm. all right. I'm glad that people are interested because we're going to forge on. Um, I'm going to do a little presentation on filming with your phone in that case. So you can either do a screen share, which is uh, you can do it from a mobile device, um, or you can do, um, and in fact, would you guys like to, unfortunately, I guess I can, this is the problem with Zoom not showing its interface. Um, I'm going to call, do you guys want to see how to share your screen from a mobile device? Would that be helpful? Yes. Okay. So give me a second. I'm going to have to do one of these. All right. Um, so I'm going to invite myself under manage participant or sorry, under invite. I'm going to send, which is in the bottom left or not left hand, but kind of middle part of that bar. I'm going to invite myself. Accept. I'm going to unplug these so you hear the microphone from the from so I don't get feedback. Are you able to use more than one camera, like your phone and your computer, or another, like a GoPro or something? Seth, you're muted. 
better. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, did you hear my question? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. I would, I would probably, hold on, I'm trying to. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, why is it still, oh, I know why. My audio is saying the system. That is so irritating. Sorry, guys. This one? Oops. Hey, big guys. Open your eyes. What do you say? It's a brand new day. <laughs> Yawn. Stretch. Cut your toes. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Wiggle your nose. Shout out loud. Good morning, son. Happy morning, everyone. Hey, little guys. Open your eyes. What do you say? It's a brand new day. Is there a person in here? I'm trying to uh, our manager. Sorry, Seth, what did you say you were cutting out? Did you guys hear somebody else in the meeting? Oh, I yes. Think, I think someone left their mic on. Um, let's, uh, I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna mute everybody's mics. <laughs> I think it. Let's see. Okay, I think that went away. Okay, so to answer Anne's question, um, you, I don't think that you can. You can't like zoom in a GoPro right now. If you're gonna do that, you need to edit that in post. Um. But in terms of how to share your screen, I'm in my Zoom interface right here. Let's see if I can get it lined up. Sorry. Um, there we go. Everything's backwards, so. Come on. So under that interface, there's a share screen right here. And that's where I'm gonna be able to um, share my screen right. So I just click on screen. Anyway, did you guys, can you guys see that okay? So there's an option, I go, it's at the very top and I say share screen and then it's gonna, be like, oh, waiting to broadcast in T minus five, four, three, two, one, and then it'll show you the screen. All right, I'm back. Do people, can people hear okay? Okay, yes. good. Yes. Okay, so um, that's, that's how you're gonna share your screen and you can actually record from your screen too, which is pretty cool. Um, so if, if that's something that you want as an element of your show, you can have people do that. I would recommend that you not just do it yourself. <laughs> you get somebody else to run that device for you. Um, okay, so, I'm going to talk a little bit about filming with your phone. How many people are interested in using their phone to create elements for their show as well? So it's not just screen share a little bit. Okay. It looks like, do you, Kyle, do you have an iPhone 11? Juicy. Is it the Pro? Oh, yeah. I'm jelly. <laughs> okay. So um, let's take a look here. I'm just going to present, and I'll do this a little bit quicker because um, I want to be mindful of time and also because I know that not everybody is interested in this. Um, so you re again, you want to be really careful about aesthetics. And it really, you know, if you have an Android phone or an iPhone, what I recommend is you set, you put your settings to the highest resolution possible. Most things can shoot 4K at this point. So 
set them at 4K. And Jay Lou, do you mind dropping into the chat um, the, the settings information, how to access settings on their phones? Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure it's the highest resolution um, because when you plug that back into Final Cut or Premiere or whatever, um, you're going to want to, if, if you incorporate that with your Zoom recording, you're going to want to have like the best resolution. So continuing. Make sure, I mean, this is just like other filming is you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of distracting noises around dogs and traffic and humming refrigerators. Um, it really helps to have a microphone that you can plug into your device. Uh, that's going to give you a lot better audio. And then they sell Zoom has, or sorry, uh, Rhodes makes these little shotgun mics that you can plug onto your stuff and they're, they're pretty handy. Uh, make sure that if you do that, like don't get too close to people. I think it's really easy to get into film mode and be like, oh, let me get up in your grill. Or think about when you mic somebody, you might want to sanitize that afterwards. Um, keep in mind the shot types. Your zoom on your phone, you don't want to use your zoom because it's digital zoom, not optical zoom. So optical zoom is the glass that's already on your phone, and it's going to look way better than if you zoom in. If you zoom in, it just gets pixelated. Yes. It looks like, Kyle, you have the wide, the telephoto, and the normal lens, correct? Awesome. Um, but you want to think about shot types. You don't want to just shoot wide shots of everybody. So think about how can I shoot, how can I shoot closer? Um, I think we forget about that a lot. Think about composition. So think about the rule of thirds when you're shooting. Um, you don't always want to just bullseye people. You might want to do direct address, and it makes a lot of sense for a Zoom meeting to be in the middle, but it may not make sense if you're doing an interview. You might want to have somebody on that third line, or it depends on what you're shooting. Like, Just keep in mind that putting everything in the center is not always super um, pleasing to the eye. The other thing is think about like if you're shooting a flower or something like that. Don't always just shoot it from up above. That's what most people do, and that's why a lot of shots of flowers don't look good. Get right down up in that thing's grill. People want to see those details. And we talked about this a little bit earlier. Make sure you have good camera support. So handheld is good, and but think about you may want to have a tripod. Joby makes these gorilla pods that are pretty awesome and can attach to just about anything. Um, shoot horizontally. Do not shoot vertically. <laughs> That's not how our eyes see. And in the long run, you want to have a horizontal shot. And I know that on Instagram, it, it, vertical shots is what it's set for, but you want to use a horizontal shot because otherwise you have to do that thing where you have like the, your video in the middle of it and then fill in the sides that are usually black. Um, it's called pillar boxing. You have to like fill it. What they've done now is they just fill in blurry video in the background, like a repeat of the video. So turn your, your phone sideways. Um, don't, don't use the zoom on your phone. We talked about that earlier, but, um, just, um, especially when you're filming, it's not going to look nice. Um, and unless Sasquatch is way off in the distance, I wouldn't use it, you know, unless you absolutely need that shot. Make sure phones are not as good as, as, um, as more modern like pro cameras uh, at, at auto sensing. Even modern pro cameras aren't very good. So try and make sure that you have enough light and don't um, shoot people up, up against backgrounds like a window with a lot of backlighting. Um, and if you want more finite control of your camera, the, both um, Google, so both Android and um, iPhone, iOS, apps, their, their stock apps are really good, but you often have to fight them for control. Um, it'll like, you'll focus on something and then it'll snap back and, and you like lose the exposure that you had or the focus that you had. There's a, there's an app called Filmic Pro, which is both for iPhone and Android. If you want more finite control over your camera, that's a good option. I'm going to skip this about storytelling. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what to edit in. I use um, 
it's called Power Director for Android to, to edit on my phone. And then iOS, I would just recommend iMovie. There's other stuff you can use. Um, and obviously, if you have something better at home, like Final Cut or Premiere, um, I definitely would say use one of those things to edit. Uh, usually, they can just see your phone as a camera. So you can just hook up your phone to your um, laptop, and it will see it as a camera, especially if it's an iPhone playing with, a, with Final Cut. And then obviously, um, it's, it's usually super sh easy to share from those things. Um, do people, I have a question, how many people have an iDevice in this group? How many people have an Android device? Anybody with an Android device? All right, Rose. Yes. <laughs> um, and Naley, we have Both. you too. Um, yes. So can I ask which uh, Android phone you have? Um, Android phone, I have Samsung. Okay. And I, I'm also going to use Snowcaps um, iPad. Okay. okay. In that case, on the iPad, they have really good settings. Um, I can actually just demo it right now. Give me a second here. And I'm going to jump onto this so it's going to get a little bit echoey for a moment. OK. OK, can you guys hear me OK? Good. Um, let's see here. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to start broadcast. So um, if we go into settings, There's one for camera. And um, under that, I have it set to 4K at 30 FPS, but there's a bunch of different flavors. So when you when you use your iPad daily, I'd go in here and I'd set it to 4K, depending on how much storage you have. Um, if I'm not, if not, then I would either use 1080 at 30, I would probably just do 1080p at 30 frames per second. Okay. Um, Rose, you. Rose, do you have any questions about using an Android device to film? You're you're muted. I'm just gonna hold my phone up to the computer, and you can laugh at me because I'm never gonna use this for anything until I get what? a new one. <laughs> but it still works. In the end. Okay, that you don't have to be ashamed of your phone. It probably shoots okay video. I mean, that's the reality is like anything, most things shoot 1080p and that's, that's good. Like that's, that's what you need. Um, it's, it's probably, you know, if you're trying to do a production, you have Final Cut or something like that. Like it'd be awesome. You can do sort of an interview type setup and then you could go to a field production type setup. Mm -hmm. um, who, is there anybody else that uses an Android phone that I didn't address? I have a Pixel 3. Oh, wonderful. OK, um, in that case, um, let, me get, let me dive into, do we want to look at, do you guys want to look at the, the different editing software, the iMovie software? OK, so while I'm still sharing this, I'm going to show iMovie off real quick, and then I'm going to switch over to my Android phone, and I'll talk a little bit about the camera and the editing software. Does that sound good, Meg? Fantastic. Or if I'm the only one, we can do it offline. Um, okay. I'm also interested. Okay, sweet. Um, finally, I get to talk about an Android phone. The last workshop we did, everybody had an iPhone. So I was like, well, might as well not talk about it. Okay, so here's iMovie. I'm going to open that up. It's like five bucks. It's awesome. Um, if you want to create a new, if you want to create a new project, I'm going to go out of here, exit out of here. You hit the little plus button in the top left-hand corner. Did you say that uh, iMovie is available for Android for $5? No, it's, it's only on Apple phones. That's what I thought. OK, thanks. Um, there's a trailer mode, and there's a movie mode. And if you want to do trailer, it's got, got some cool templates in there. But I'm just going to pick movie. 
And then what you can do is you can go and pick the stuff that you want to end up on your timeline. You just click on the things and I can just click on them one at a time. Or um, the, part of this is once you select all this stuff, all it's just gonna dump everything you selected onto your timeline. So if you only want it to like show a couple things and add stuff later, I would just pick a couple things. Um, you can also go into video mode and select the portion of the video that you want to insert. And those yellow handles on the side, all you need to do is just drag them. And then you click that little check mark to insert it. Um, this is some slow motion video that I did of a lawnmower because I like real mowers. Um, I'm going to say create movie. And then it just has the stuff that I selected. Yeah, is, is, is there anybody else audio going in and out, or is it just me? Are we having fluctuating audio issues? Could be just you. Not having any issues. Not having issues. I'll try and get away from my um, headphones because there might be a little bit of um, echoing going on. Um, so an iMovie, this was actually when it snowed, and this is the last tiny bit of our snowman. Um, an iMovie, again, it's very straightforward to, to like trim sections. I just drag, drag the edges. Um, if I want to split a clip, there's that split right there. So I move the playhead, and then I can hit split. So I select that, and there's that split option um, right there. I can hit split, it splits it in half. Um, these are all transitions that auto adds fades between things and I prefer it not. So I can click on that transition and just say none. And there's a bunch of different other types of transitions you can do. Um, if I wanna add video, I hit the plus sign in the top right hand corner. I go to video and I can pick sort of whatever I want. Um, I can do recently added here, and I can pick the video that I want to add if I, if I didn't add everything to my timeline. So um, if I want to add some music, which I don't have any right now, because this is a controlled device, I would just go into songs and be able to put those on the bottom. But I'll put in, um, I think there's some, I think there's some, Let's see here, say media. I think under audio, there's some options that has like some sound effects. Hmm, I don't have any here. Nope. Nope. Anyway, if you're gonna insert sound, it'd be here. And that's my Does BB. That bring up notifications? What's that? Does that bring up like yeah. on your phone? That'll up. bring up iTunes, even ones that I have created myself and put on iTunes. Yep. Great. Yep. Um, so if I go back, I'm going to leave. Uh, oh, sound effects. There we go. So let's say I want to put in applause. I can press plus. And then it puts it down here on this bottom timeline. If I need to move that around, I have to hard press and then I can move it around on the bottom of the timeline. Um, if I don't want to see the waveforms with my audio right here, I can hit this waveform button in the, in the right hand corner and it hides those waveforms. But I like to see it because it helps me know where to cut. And let's see here, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave this window. Oops. And if you wanna see, like, if you wanna take a little tour, there's that question mark and it'll show you where, what all those symbols mean. Here I can do all sorts of, I can add an, a filter to my project. So if I wanna make it black and white, it'll make it black and white. Um, I can add soundtracks if I want or themes. We have some questions in chat about how to bring in a recorded Zoom meeting into iMovie to edit. 
Um, so would you be, the question is, are you editing it on your phone or are you editing it on a computer? Probably on the iPad. Okay. Um, you would have to, let me get, let me think about this. You would have to, what I would, re, what I recommend is you set up Google Drive on your, um, on your iPad. Down, like, set it up so that you can download from Google Drive onto your iPad, and then that would be a way that you could import that footage into iMovie. Okay, so that's iMovie, just a quick tour of it. It's very quick and easy to use. Um, I have a quick question. Um, adding B-roll, I found the limitation is it doesn't allow you to put transitions between your B-roll shots. As, have you found a workaround for that? Um, I would say no. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's iMovie. Um, it, it is limited. So you have to think about, you know, do at least on an iPad. I don't know in iMovie for your computer if you can do that. But yeah, you can. Might. It's much more robust on a desktop. I just wondered on the mobile. Yeah, yeah it's not, it ain't easy. Um, it ain't perfect, but it, it does, for most purposes, gets the job done. Um, you can do voiceover if you want to in the corner here. And you just press record and you can record some voiceover. There's some question about frame rate and then also format in the chat. Okay. Um, frame rate. Um, let's see what the. I'd like to film either 24 or 30 frames per second. So on an iPhone, what I would recommend is. I always say shoot 24p uh, because that looks like film. Um, if you want it to look more cinematic, if you're using, if you're already using Zoom, I would probably just use 30 frames per second. Um, and then, but if you want to do something in slow motion, I would just use the slow motion option. Um, if you go to your camera, that's one of the options. And 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 in fact, Filmic Pro will do this too. But if you go to your camera. Oh, I can't do slow motion on here because it's using the video. But on your camera, slow motion is an option. I can't do it right now because it's not shown because I'm actually using the camera from the iPad. And it won't let me. Okay. Any more iMovie questions? Okay. We go to, I'm going to say done. Come on. Oop, I got to cancel out of here. Done. And then if you want to share your movie to YouTube or whatever, Vimeo, you just hit that share button at the bottom. It's the square with the thing, with the um, arrow. And you can share to YouTube, Vimeo. Um, you can also save the video if you want something higher, higher quality. Okay. Any other questions about filming or editing with your with your i i device? Okay, I'm going to switch gears to Android, um, but I'm going to jump back into the meeting real quick because I don't. Want, um, is there anybody? Is there anybody that needs to leave the meeting now and is not interested in looking at Android stuff? You can go if you need to. You can go. What, what was the question again? Um, is there anybody that does is not interested in learning the Android device using how to an, use Android devices to edit or film? You are interested, Christina. No, you have. I have an iPhone, but I. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so what I would say is, um, if you guys are interested in in creating content and, and sending it to us to put on our channels, 
if you're already a Metro East producer, then you can, you, and you've taken our orientation, you can just send it along. Um, if you're not, we'll see what we can work out, but you guys have my email. It's Seth at MetroEast.org. If you do have content that you want to submit to our channels, let us know and we'll work on trying to get it up on, on there. Yeah, we go out to over 350,000 homes in the greater Portland area. So if that's something that you're interested in, just send me an email, Seth at MetroEast.org, and I can connect you to Lauren, our, um, our director of playback, to see how we can make that happen. Okay. Any closing questions from the non-Android people? Any other questions for iPhone people? Okay, I'm gonna move on to Android stuff. And if you wanna stick around, you're welcome to. If you need to go, that's okay too. Okay, so let's talk about using an Android device to record. So I'm gonna share my screen. And everybody can see my screen. Oh, yes. it's too cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go into camera. And let's see here. Under video settings. Oops. Turn that. I'm gonna go under settings and I can like put up a, a grid, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there's this option for ultra high resolution video. And Meg, this should work pretty well with you because you have a Pixel 3. I'm using a Pixel 2 right now. Um, and I would keep the video stabilization on, it really helps. So that's how we switch between 4K and 1080p re resolution. Okay, now I'm gonna go into, that's what we're gonna film in, but to edit, I use something called PowerDirector. There's a ton of different options out there. Um, it's, I, I choose this, this is something that I vetted, I'm familiar with, it's got like 4.6 stars on Android App Store, and I think it works pretty well. There's other options and they work pretty well. Um, but this is one that I felt like was pretty easy to use. So if I'm going to create a new project, um, I'm gonna just click new project down at the bottom. And I'll just say test. Um, and then you have the option of 16 by nine, nine by 16 or one to one, obviously for social media types, I'm gonna do 16 by nine. I'm always gonna wanna film this way. And then um, I'm able to um, use stuff from my camera, film, film from my camera. And this is a paid app. I think they have a subscription now, but it allows you to use like 4K footage. And a lot of this is footage that I shot for our co-video contest. So if I wanna add something, I pick something, I add that little plus, I can play it in advance or I can just put it on the timeline. It's gonna ask, do I wanna convert this, blah, blah, blah. I'll say use original. And then you'll see on the timeline where I put my stuff down here, I can edit this just like an iMovie. So there's handles here. I can adjust, I can adjust the length of things. Um, I can cut that clip in half. Let's go back. Um, Looks pretty intuitive. Yeah, it's a lot like iMovie. Use original. And then if I wanna split it on the bottom left-hand corner, there's that little razor, I can split that in half. Mm -hmm. And it'll split that in two, or maybe not because I'm hitting a different interface, come on. Come on. Well, it will on your phone. Anyway, there we go. Uh, split it in two. And then I can add all sorts of effects to it if I want to. Go back. Um, I can adjust the speed. I can adjust, 
I can change the filters on it so it looks different. Um, and then I can also add audio. So I'm going to go back and pick here. Um, there's, if you look at the top, there's the very top, there's like a little camera, a little photo, and a little music icon. So if I click on that music icon, I can do like a voiceover. Um, it can't because I'm using it for something else, I think. Um, but then I can pick, they have like, music that I can use that they already have. Or you can just get your own music. And go back, go back. So I'm going to go back one more and just kind of show you a final project. And this is something we did for the, um, the COVID, the COVIDio contest. I'm going to go to edit project. But you can see I have all sorts of like titles on there. And um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of using a ton of like fade transitions, um, but I have an audio layer right here and then I did voiceover too on the bottom here. And then just wove in all these clips. I didn't use any B-roll, but you can do B-roll in here. So, any questions about PowerDirector or editing on an Android phone? Thanks for the recommendation. I'll give it a try and let you know how it works out. Okay. Um, Seth, question. Is this a paid app or a yes. free app? Um, it is paid. And, and I think that's what you'll find with the majority of things is they require you either pay or they put their watermark on it. Um, so right now, I don't, Power Director, when I bought it, it was like six bucks, but now it's like a monthly subscription, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it's kind of up to you if you want to pay the monthly subscription. They probably offer a yearly cost for it too. Um, I think it really depends on, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you want to make your films? If you're limited to your phone, then, and it's an Android phone, I'd recommend use your phone. But if you have either a PC or a um, or a, a Macintosh computer. I would recommend one of those because your editing experience is going to be easier. Okay, I'm going to stop that video share. Go, Go back, back to Okay. So, any questions? Any statements? Any feelings about anything? <laughs> Kyle. Okay. No, I'm, thank you for sharing. That was, yeah, that was fun. Any, Kyle, what do you, what do you think you're going to do with this? Um, so I, I am down in uh, California. I'm a CMAC staff member and mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to see what everybody else was doing. Sure. Um, we've started a CMAC video challenge um, mm -hmm. where we give a prompt every week for, for people to just have some inspirato to yeah. create. And, um, yeah, we've created a, a handful of of tutorials of creating with your mobile device as well. So I, I just wanted to check in and and see how everyone else was doing it. So uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for sharing your insights. When's your next class, Seth? Oh, you're muted. Our next class is this Friday from 10 to noon. J. Lou, you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, she might. I think she's gone. So Jessica Lou is going to be doing a podcasting with your phone class. Okay. Yep. So if you guys want to come to that, it's same place. It's on our website. Um, I can give you the link right now. Give me a moment and I'll plop it into the chat.
And you guys probably heard my baby in the background. <laughs> Elijah, did you just say anything? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that we were really interested in some of those similar things, kind of making video prompts to give out to either our students or folks in the community to kind of do some more of that community engagement around our uh, nonprofit since we're a theater organization and we can't perform right now. So yeah. uh, find ways to kind of bring people together and showcase some of those performances. And so being able to host meetings to kind of prep the material and then also the video editing and kind of best practices was really helpful so that we can produce good content. Yeah. Just to chime so in. So really appreciate it and definitely looking forward to the Friday podcasting. Okay. In, I'm putting it in the chat right now. In my community, the Fresno State Theater Department has been doing remote interviews like this over uh, Zoom and uh, Google Hangouts with uh, student actors and, and checking in with how they're doing and, and the thoughts on the, on the performances that were canceled. So that, that's definitely an interesting way to keep up with the community. You may, you may be uh, able to, to follow up. Are those, are those open to the public or just in your area? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're just online. Um, Fresno State University Theater is uh, their handle on most social media, uh, Twitter and, and Instagram and Facebook and stuff. And they, they've been posting videos. I'll, I'll try to find, pull up a link and drop it in the chat. Yeah, I was going to say, what was, what was community theater? What community theater? Uh, Fresno State University. Fresno University. State University. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'm interested in doing a podcast with some some fun effects like I like to do. Um, so I'm in for the class too. Okay. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to say thank you for those great content. This was a great um, training for me. Um, so this is in regards to an iPhone. So I was just looking through my settings for a camera and it looks like I have 4K at 30, uh, 30 FPS. There's also um, one that says 4K at 60 FPS, which makes it smoother when it's 60. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend using? Because I've been using the 30 and I've liked it, but... 30 is fine. One. Okay. 30 is fine. And in fact, it probably weighs in at a smaller file size. You have to think about, so FPS stands for frames per second. Mm -hmm. And what that means is in one second, it shoots 30 photos. That's like, that's the magic behind film is basically it's like a flip book. It's just a bunch of pictures in a row. And the more pictures you take, the more memories that, that that's going to eat up. So I would recommend keep shooting at 30 frames per second. And then if I personally, I like to shoot in 24 frames per second. And if it's an option and I'm just doing like a standalone piece, it looks more like film. It looks more cinematic. Um, but if you're doing something like this, which is like an interview setup and you want to weave in footage, I'd keep it at 30 frames per second because this is probably shooting at that. Um, it does look like smoother motion, but again, it eats up more, um, more space, most likely. And it also, um, you know, most everything, I think, you know, it's like most things, 30 frames per second is just fine. Super. Thank you so much. Yeah.